Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. We're going to be finishing off today's show by talking some NFL and reacting to the news that we have a new highest paid receiver in the NFL. Amon Ra St. Brown agrees to a contract extension with the Detroit Lions for years $120 million dollars which matches Tyree Kill in terms of annual value of a contract, but the $77 million guaranteed makes him officially the highest paid receiver in terms of guaranteed money. So this is a move that isn't all too surprising that he was going to get paid. St. Brown has been an absolute monster for the Lions since being drafted in just the fourth round of the 2021 draft. He was going to be coming up on a contract extension and this past year he puts together an all pro first team um performance where he had career highs in receptions yards touchdowns all across the board he was incredible and i think that this is very much warranted amon ross st brown just 24 years old so tons of time left on his deal as well I know that um, big boss at the company, Andrew Tate at here at GSMC, thinks that he can be the best wide receiver in the NFL. I feel like that's hard to sort of claim when you live in a world with Justin Jefferson sort of in that same stratosphere, stratosphere coming out in the same draft, I believe they were. Jefferson was actually 2020, but also 24 years old, going to be turning 25, headed into next season. So I don't know if I necessarily see see Amon Ra taking over the crown from Jefferson, but either way, Amon Ra St. Brown has the chance of being, you know, one of, he already is a top tier wide receiver and he has done wonders for the Lions to help sort of turn their franchise around in these years with Dan Campbell having the threat of St. Brown on the outside has also very greatly impacted the uh, the play of Jared Goff, who coming into this season, or really coming into his Lions tenure as a whole, he was seen as somebody who was on a contract that was Um, that was really bad and that the Lions were probably just going to take on this contract as a part of the Stafford deal and play it out, end up drafting his replacement. But it now seems like Goff is going to be the long-term starter there. At least he's going to get another contract. It would, I would imagine going to be an expensive one, which does sort of fall into a conversation of how much are you willing to pay Goff? Now, the quarterback market obviously always only goes up and up as the years go on here, but it's going to be interesting to see where he falls. I would imagine it's going to be in the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, $40 million, $50 million. I know that sounds like a lot for Goff and you know, I'm not necessarily in love with the idea necessarily, but if you have one of these front loaded contracts where you end up giving Goff about four years and you know, he's making um, a lot of that money on the back half where it's less guaranteed, I feel like it would be almost a little bit of a no brainer. The lions think that they are super bowl contenders next year. And I do too. Um, so I'm not saying it's delusional or anything, but they were just in the NFC championship game. They had a really good chance of making the super bowl. If they hadn't sort of fallen apart there at the, at the end. And I feel like they have this have this opportunity where it's so rare that a team like the Lions sort of comes up in such an explosive way over a two-year span. Really, you can call it a year and a half span because they were bad. They were one and six or something along those lines to start off the 2022 season and then ended their season on the high note and only ramped up as the season went on here. But for the Lions to explode like that and to be able to hold on to both your offensive and defensive coordinators is a pretty rare thing. And it's because, you know, Ben Johnson, their offensive coordinator, who was 
really being said that it was a lock that he was going to be coaching the Washington Commanders moving forward, that he said he wanted to come back and have another chance to win a Super Bowl here. And, you know, maybe it's partially in due to the fact that Washington wasn't the most appealing job to him ever, even though they have the number two overall pick and he could have potentially moved forward with his own quarterback and, you know, whatever. But at this point, we're all speaking hypotheticals because he's back in Detroit and... It seems like um, they are really locked in. And as I'm sort of looking into this now, I didn't even realize as I was coming into the show, I knew about the St. Brown extension that was signed a few hours ago. They actually, just 30 minutes ago as well, signed offensive tackle Penne Sewell to a deal that looks like it is four years, $112 million dollars. Sewell is one of the best offensive linemen in the NFL already. So another, you know, top position player that they end up paying. Sewell was really, it seemed like, before the uh, 2020 college football season started, it seemed like Sewell was going to be one of the top three players off the board. But then the quarterbacks really started building up a... A reputation for how good they were. Now, obviously, only one of them actually held up. You had some surprise moves in there, such as Kyle Pitts being selected fourth overall. But Sewell has been an absolute monster for Detroit. He's coming off a an all-pro season himself. I think that he is a lock to be one of the best offensive linemen for at least probably another decade because he was really young when he was coming into the NFL. He played the 2021 rookie season as a 21-year-old, and he's already increasingly gotten better over the past couple years, which is super encouraging to see. So again, Jared Goff now, it seems like, is really that last domino to fall in terms of what type of a contract are they going to give him, but definitely very encouraging here for the Lions and if you're not necessarily fully married to Goff in terms of being a franchise quarterback which I can understand some hesitations it's very rare you see somebody have the start of his career like Jared Goff did and be able to turn himself into a real impact player that is capable of winning you playoff games I thought that he was good through their entire round in or their entire uh, playoffs here and no they maybe didn't you know win the playoff games I got into an argument with one of my friends at the time saying how can you put that on Jared Goff at all no their offense wasn't necessarily tremendous down the stretch of the game but there were so many other things that went wrong for the Lions in terms of some unlucky bounces obviously the the deep shot that um I think Ayuk ended up catching that set the Niners up in the red zone. There was the fourth down decisions in terms of going for it instead of the field goals. I didn't think that those were necessarily his fault. Now, maybe you wish Goff would have executed better, and maybe you argue that, you know, if you're going to pay $40 million to somebody, then they should be able to make those plays. But their receivers were also dropping passes, um, and... I also thought that the decision at the end of the game in terms of calling the timeout when they were in the red zone as well was a really bad move for them. So again, just sort of running through the reasons why they lost that NFC Championship game, I can name a handful of things that I am putting on the lines before I'm blaming Jared Goff himself. Now again, the questions surrounding how much is he going to be paid is going to be a big one, but... I don't know. I think that the Lions are in a really good position moving forward here. They drafted so well last year, and all of their uh, returning rookies going into second year should be impact players. And um, if I can quickly look up here what type of draft capital the Lions have in this upcoming season, I mean, if they can replicate the... You know, success they had in last year's draft, specifically in those first two rounds with it was uh, Laporta, it was Gibbs, it was Brian Branch, and it was Jack Campbell. All, all four of them were really impactful players. Um, and, 
you know, they have three picks in the first three rounds again. So we will see how this all sort of plays out for them. But I feel good about the Lions moving forward. I do still think that the NFC is very gettable. And uh, yeah, I think that it was sort of a no-brainer move for both St. Brown and Sewell, which again, I didn't even know when I was coming into this segment that that news had broken during the show. So a lot of encouraging stuff to see for the Lions. You have to commend, I believe Brad Holmes is their general manager and the way that they have been able to turn this franchise around after some really rough years in Detroit and Lions fans clearly are absolutely loving it. They are one of the most fun football environments in the NFL today. And yeah, should be interesting to see. They have the number 29 overall pick in tomorrow's draft, which as we wrap up this show is just a reminder that we're going to be live uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern through 3. We're going to be doing all types of draft coverage, biggest questions. We have some very interesting rumors surrounding the, the LA Chargers at pick number 5 and what they may do. So we have all types of draft coverage plus the NBA games that will be taking place tonight in both the Celtics versus Heat and the Thunder versus the Pelicans, all of that tomorrow. So definitely be sure to tune in then. As for today, though, that is all we have time for. Thank you very much for tuning in to the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. We will be live one last time, 2 p.m. Eastern, tomorrow afternoon. We will see you then. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go.